active debris removal mission. It's also important to note, Kevin has the authority. We are opening these sites 24-7. Uh, there's some scuttlebutt trying to say the DEP, Florida DEP, is not allowing that. That is not true. It is Everything is going forward. Uh, these things need to be open, and they are going to be utilized. Uh, and so we have, and, and, and Kevin and his team are coordinating with all the local EM directors uh, to inform them of the waste and landfill sites that have been ordered to remain open 24-7, and we're surging assets uh, to be able to do that. So all available state assets that, and, and you know, people understand our state agencies have missions, normal missions uh, in the course of normal business, all assets that can help with debris removal uh, are being marshaled to help remove the debris. So if FDOT has dump trucks in um, Seminole County that can be used to help remove debris in the Berry Islands of many, they're going to do that. Uh, we are using every resource at our disposal to help our local communities uh, get the debris off. Look, there's been some good work that's been done with this since Helene, and, and I know a lot of the local communities have taken this serious, and, and I've seen progress just by going around and visiting, but you also have some areas where there's a lot of debris that's there. So you get hit with a, with a major hurricane, what do you think that, what's going to happen to that debris? It's going to increase the damage dramatically. Uh, and so Kevin and his team have been working on this this weekend. Uh, we're going 24-7 uh, to be able to do. And if you think about clearly all day today, all day Monday, and then hopefully most of Tuesday or maybe all of Tuesday, I mean, you know, if it hits Wednesday uh, evening, you'll probably start getting some effects maybe late Tuesday night. We'll see. And this can shift. Uh, but this is all hands on deck to get that debris uh, where it needs to be. Final note. Uh, we have instructed assets currently assisting in North Carolina and Tennessee to return uh, the necessary equipment and personnel home ahead of Milton's landfall. So State Guard, National Guard, FWC, Highway Patrol, FDL, uh, FDLE will be home, manned up, ready to deploy in Florida uh, should those assets be needed to respond to Hurricane Milton. Power restoration. It was the quickest restoration. I think there were 2.4 million restorations, uh, and it got down to within less than a week. I mean, I think there were a couple thousand accounts in areas where the needed to be rebuilt, but it was a, it was a really great effort. The co-ops did a really good job. Uh, Duke did a really good job. Uh, this potential restoration effort, if we do have an I-4 storm, uh, you are going to see a lot of power outages. I mean, that is just something that I think people should prepare for. Uh, we already have a, a lot of crews coming into the state of Florida. They're going to be staged in, in different parts of the state of Florida, uh, and they are going to be going as soon as the storm uh, passes. But this is something that um, potentially would be uh, greater power outages than what we just saw with Hurricane Helene. So, so Floridians should just be prepared for that. Uh, no, if you're, if you're anywhere near that cone, certainly uh, you should prepare to have power interruptions. That's just the reality of what we're dealing with. But there is massive amount of resources that are being marshaled, and I think it's Kevin and I's judgment that you're likely to have greater outages uh, for this. Even if it doesn't end up reaching major status, you're still likely going to have greater outages uh, on a Hurricane Milton than we just did with a Category 4 Hurricane Helene. And of course, Milton could end up being a major hurricane as well. So you have time to prepare all day today, all day Monday, probably all day uh, Tuesday to be able to put your hurricane preparedness plan in place. Make sure your gas tanks are filled. Make sure you have enough water and non-perishable food uh, to last you as long as the power uh, may be out. Uh, clear up loose objects in your yard. Obviously, the big debris piles, you need that to get hauled away. But anything uh, other than that that isn't debris, make sure that you, you have that. Uh, know your evacuation zone. There will be voluntary and mandatory evacuations uh, in effect in a number of communities uh, throughout the state of Florida. If you're on that west coast of Florida and barrier islands, uh, just assume that you, you likely are going to be uh, called upon to evacuate. Now, there's uncertainty about the storm. It, it's, it, it, we don't, this is an unusual track in terms of it coming from the Pacific Ocean, hopping across Mexico, forming, and then coming horizontally into the west coast of Florida. Not, I think, any uh, type of storm that has been dealt with, certainly in recent years. Um, 
when these storms hit, uh, the areas that are on kind of the dirty side of the storm, uh, they're going to get more storm surge. And so if you look at Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay is uh, very vulnerable to storm surge. I mean, we just saw a storm 100 miles off the coast generate four to six feet in a lot of places of that. Uh, if the Tampa Bay is on the dirty side of the storm, it's likely to generate storm surge in excess of what Helene did. Uh, if the storm is further south and Tampa Bay is on the, the weak side of the storm, it may be that the storm pulls water out uh, of Tampa Bay. So there's a wide range of possibilities uh, that can happen there. Uh, but bottom line is you're potentially looking at storm surge that was more significant than what we saw in Hurricane Helene. Um, you do not have to get in the car and drive 500 miles. Uh, you're going to be able to have places to evacuate within your own counties. There's also other counties that are already starting to step up and offering sheltering that may not be in the direct path of the storm. And so all that information will, will be available if you go to floridadisaster.org backslash shelters, uh, or you can also reach out to your local emergency management officials about that. Now, I don't think shelters have been open yet, but you can anticipate that that will happen in the not too distant future. In Florida, remember, take care of your pets. Every county has at least one pet-friendly shelter. Uh, don't leave your pets behind. If you are using uh, lodging at, at our hotels, when there's a state of emergency, uh, the hotels um, have agreed to accommodate your pets, and that's very, very important uh, that you do that. We already have sandbag locations open in multiple counties in South and Central Florida. Uh, check your county's EM page to see where those locations are. You can find your county's emergency management page at floridadisaster.org backslash counties. And remember, uh, calls on evacuation, uh, some of the access to barrier islands, all that, those are all going to be issued by the local emergency management officials. So please keep an eye on this storm. Uh, the, there's a bit, I mean, the, the greater cone covers almost the entire west coast of Florida at this point. And so, and even if you're not in the cone, as it gets closer, uh, certainly if you're on that, uh, the dirty side of the storm, there's going to be surge that, that goes outside the cone that's going to be significant. Uh, so just prepare for that and understand that's something that is likely uh, to happen. Apply for assistance. So people that are still suffering from Helene uh, can apply for assistance by going to hopeflorida.com or calling 1-833-GET-HOPE. Uh, this is now open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we understand when you have on the heels of a, of a major hurricane to then have another, this is similar to like 2004, uh, when Florida had multiple in a row, uh, that makes it difficult. And, and if you need help, there's a lot of organizations that have been out there helping these communities, and you can reach them through the Hope Florida line. When you do have power out, I think people uh, really took this, has taken this to heart in recent years on generator use. Great, if you want a generator, use the generator when, if you lose power, but do not run that generator in your home. Uh, that could be fatal. Uh, make sure you're looking at limbs and trees that could fall on your home. If this is a major hurricane and it goes across I-4, it's, um, I think, would still likely be hurricane force winds by the time it exited the Florida Peninsula into the Atlantic Ocean. So you, know, you could be far away from the west coast of Florida and still have major impacts in terms of the, uh, the wind and the debris. So just do what you need to do to protect yourself. Have a plan to ensure your electric vehicle is away from your home if your home has the potential to be impacted by storm surge. Salt water making contact with electric vehicles has been known to cause fires, so please take the appropriate precautions to get your EV out of potential storm surge areas. And just know uh, if you evacuate and you are in one of these low-lying areas that's susceptible to surge, if you have that EV in the garage down there uh, and you get four, six, eight feet of storm surge, uh, your home may handle that well, but if that EV catches on fire, you could lose your home through the fire. These are very difficult fires to point out, uh, to put out. So just please take appropriate precautions. Emergency alerts save lives, so please have multiple ways to receive those alerts and act immediately when you do receive them. Uh, stay safe on this. You do have time to prepare. Uh, the storm is not going to come today or tomorrow or likely on, on Tuesday as well. So we're looking at more of the middle of the week. So, so you have time to do what you need to do. Uh, but this could potentially be a major hurricane. No matter what happens, it is going to have 
impacts uh, to the state of Florida. I don't think there's any scenario where we don't have significant impacts uh, at this point. So, so please uh, do what you need to do to keep yourself and your family safe. I want to thank Kevin and, and his team and everyone for you kind of ramp up for a major hurricane. You do response. They did a great job responding. And uh, with the rescues, our local governments and, and law enforcement and first responders did a great job. Massive mobilization of pods. All these other things have been great. And, you know, you go through that. You're kind of running around the clock. And then you got to ramp it back up again. And so I think the morale is good here. And I know in these communities that have already been hit, it's not easy. Uh, not easy to have to go through this again. It's very frustrating when you've worked hard to uh, recover from Helene and you still have so much more to do there to think that we could get hit uh, by another one. But uh, we'll get through it. Uh, we have marshaled all the resources that are available to the state uh, to prepare, including on this unprecedented debris removal mission, uh, including power genera uh, restoration, search and rescue. Everything is on the table uh, to be able to respond in a robust way. Okay, Kevin. Good morning. I want to express my thanks to Governor DeSantis for his swift action in declaring a state of emergency well ahead of the uh, hurricane's landfall. Um, he did that more than 96 hours in advance, which allows us to be very effective in our response. I want to just make sure that everybody knows we've been working this scenario. Long-range models have been indicating something for about the last 14 days. So the state emergency response team planning section has been working uh, this particular scenario as well as other scenarios for at least two weeks now. So uh, that's what's uh, making us very effective in the response. Before hurricane season ever began, our team knew to hope for the best and prepare for the worst, meaning that we were more ready than ever to respond to multiple storms in this season. No stone has been left unturned in preparing for this storm, and our private sector partners have been performing at a high level to address the complex logistical preparedness needs this threat possesses or this threat poses. Thanks to their effort, we are working around the clock to get our preparations in place, and I need all of you to now do the same. I urge Floridians to finalize your storm preparations now, enact your plan. I highly encourage you to evacuate. We are preparing, and I have the state emergency response team preparing for the largest evacuation that we have seen most likely since 2017 Hurricane Irma. But to that end, I want to go back to our basics. Evacuate if you are in an evacuation zone. If you are not in an evacuation zone and your house was built in, in conjunction with the Florida Building Code, which pretty much throughout the state of Florida means after 2004, you may be better just to stay in place. If you are dependent on power, you will need to evacuate. If you're dependent on a special set of circumstances, you'll need to evacuate. But if you're not one of those individuals and you're inland, not in an evacuation zone, it may be better for you to just stay in place. I know that many Floridians are still trying to recover from Hurricane Helene, and your plans for Milton need to reflect that. Did you go through all your water? Did you go through all your food? Did you go through all your pet food? Do you need to get new batteries? Please make sure you're doing that today. Make sure your entire family knows the plan, including seniors and children. Make sure you have enough supplies in your disaster supply kit to last each member of your family for at least seven days. Don't forget that the pets need to be included in that plan and be sure to include supplies for them as you get ready to evacuate. If you or a loved one have access or functional needs issues, please register today with Florida Special Needs Registry at floridadisaster.org slash s N R. That's S is in Sierra, N is in November, R is in Romeo, to provide to your local first responders ahead of the potential storm impacts. When you do this, your local county government will ensure that somebody actually comes to your house, picks that person up, and gets them to where they need to go. Now is the time to determine if your home can withstand the wind, hurricane force winds, and if it cannot, as I've already mentioned, you need to evacuate. You can visit floridadisaster.org slash K-N-O-W, that's slash no, to find out if you live in an evacuation zone. As we talked about two weeks ago, flood zones are different than evacuation zones. Please make sure you're paying attention to your evacuation zone, not your flood zone. I want to ensure you that each and every member of the state emergency response team has been working 24 hours a day for the last several days to make sure that we are ready for 
this particular storm. As the governor has mentioned, we are uh, doing debris removal with every state agency asset that we have, everything from pickup trucks and trailers all the way to dump trucks and grapple uh, hooks. We are getting out there and supplementing the local response to getting that debris out of the way. As the governor has said, DEP has given me the authority to utilize any site for debris management. I can go in there on a, on a minute's notice and take over that site. DEP is not standing in the way of us getting property to use the debris management sites. I have that authority. We have done that and we will continue to do that. I want to assure everybody that when you get on the evacuation routes and you start evacuating, we have thought through a lot of contingencies. Florida Department of Transportation will have all of its road rangers. We will have emergency fuel along all evacuation routes. We will have emergency EV uh, charging stations along evacuation routes. We are looking at every potential possible location that can potentially house someone as what we refer to in our uh, in emergency management as a refuge of last resort. We have been identifying those locations along evacuation routes now for more than five days in anticipation of something major happening. I say all this to tell you the state emergency response team is ready. We are prepared. We've been working every contingency, every scenario. I want you to rest assured that we're here for you and we're ready to respond to your needs. Governor, as always, thank you for everything you do. And as far as everyone uh, out there, please make sure you follow us on uh, X and Instagram at FLCERT and then on Facebook at FDM. And you can always go to floridadisaster.org uh, slash updates for all of our updates. Again, thank you very much, Governor. So you, ha you have time. Uh, you have today. You have tomorrow, probably Tuesday as well, but certainly uh, Sunday, Monday, you have time to put your plan in place. You have time to, to make the appropriate precautions. You know, as Kevin said, there are going to be uh, calls for evacuations that, that will come in areas that are in the eye of this storm that are susceptible to uh, the significant storm surge that, that we anticipate that this storm will generate. Uh, so, so heed that call. I mean, the one thing that I think people that have been through these storms uh, will tell you is uh, even in a major hurricane, you know, if you're in a structure and you're, you're hunkered down with the wind, you know, you may be able uh, uh, to get, get through that fine. It is possible. But when you have that surge, there's just no, it's mother nature and, and you're not going to win that. And, and it's incredibly powerful. And we just saw with Helene, there were homes in the big bend of Florida right there on the coast who had no damage from Idalia, which was just shy of a category four that hit last year and some of those were totally wiped off it's because of the surge because the surge was so much stronger uh, in this storm than it was a year ago with idalia and so we just saw a lot of surge man the barrier islands in manatee barrier islands in pinellas coastal parts of pasco uh and, and that was significant uh but this storm has the potential to generate even more surge than that so do not mess with that. That's something that's really, really serious. And again, just don't get wedded to where the, the landfall is being predicted right now. Uh, if you are a little bit 30, 40 miles north, that does not mean that, that the storm can't, can't toggle. If you're further south, it doesn't mean you're not going to get impacts. Uh, the cone at this point effectively can bring it almost anywhere. Uh, on the floor, western Florida Peninsula. And yes, most of the models have it somewhere in the center part, but these things can shift. So just know this is going to impact the west coast of the Florida Peninsula in terms of the surge, uh, and then it's going to go across the state and likely have hurricane force winds all the way until it exits uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. So if you're somewhere that's inland, the difference between Helene and this is you know, folks that were inland uh, didn't see as much of an impact in central Florida. I know there were power outages. I'm not saying there was nothing, but you're going to have the storm going right across potentially I-4 uh, or certainly in the center part of the state somehow, and that is going to cause uh, damage. Uh, it's going to generate debris. Uh, it's going to cause uh, potential damage to infrastructure. So, so just be prepared for that uh, and do what you need to do to be able to, to execute your plan. Okay. I'm curious about a story that I heard uh, here just a little bit ago that uh, potentially in Pinellas County, the landfill had to be essentially 
cut open so that state crews could get in there and continue dumping debris. Do you know anything about that? Or have you heard anything about yeah, that? Yeah, so that's accurate. So the executive order said 24-7. I know Kevin was in contact with the county folks. Uh, there was a bunch of state assets that had a lot of debris to dump off, and it was locked. And there was no one there manning it. And so they basically opened it. And they, and they did the debris. And that's totally appropriate to be able to do that. We need 24-7, right? I mean, this is something I, I think the local folks have worked hard on the debris. I don't think it's that, you know, it's a lot of debris, right? And so, so they worked hard on it, but, but we've got to redouble the efforts there. And we're supplementing those efforts in ways that have never been done in the history of the state of Florida. And so those debris missions need to be around the clock. Uh, you are going to save you. I think, I mean, you could potentially save lives because this debris can fly and hit people. Uh, but certainly uh, you are going to have less damage uh, if you get that debris off. So yes, there was nobody manning that site. Uh, and basically our folks in the state just opened it. And, and they're utilizing it, and, and everything's going to be open. Do you, what are the challenges of transitioning from one storm to another two weeks later? Well, the challenges, I think, is just, you know, residents get fatigued by this, right? Because they have to, their lives get upended. Some, some had damage to their homes. Some lost their homes. Uh, we obviously had, um, you know, loss of life uh, in Florida and even more in other states and so so that is very uh, a trying time uh, and that that's devastating and so you get through that and you're you're resilient and I think Floridians have been uh, but then to see another one kind of on the horizon as Kevin said this is something we've kind of been monitoring but you know if you go back when this first was being discussed um, it was kind of like in the same area where Helene was and they're like well maybe maybe not maybe rainstorms we'll see and then you kind of had this system come across from the, from the Pacific across Mexico and it's just created this so there's there, we've kind of known that something may happen but it was like maybe something was supposed to already happen. I think initially they thought it would happen this weekend, right? And so that didn't happen. And so you're like, okay, maybe you're fine. And then you see this form and then that. So I just think from a from a emotional perspective, I think it's tough. I think people uh, are, they, they do get fatigued and that's totally understandable. From a preparedness or operational perspective, we've assumed that this was going to happen. I mean, you have to assume that. As soon as we saw there was a potential, uh, we were already figuring out, okay, you know, what do we need to be doing? And we had no idea if it would, it would hit Florida for sure or what the track would be. You know, most of these storms that start where Helene, they kind of come underneath Cuba and then they come up. This one is coming all the way over from Mexico. It's a little bit different than what we've done. But in terms of preparation, you know, we're doing the same, you know, as we as we would do in any situation. We did have a very robust response. There were rescues that were effectuated, and then, yeah, you know, within 12 to 24 hours, I mean, those were basically concluded. Oh, you see, in like North Carolina, that's been an ongoing thing for over a week to be able to go and rescue people out of some of those hard hit areas. So, so our folks, you know, did their duty on that. They'll be staged, ready to go on this. You know, the power crews. We're marshalling that. We're going to be t talking. I know Kevin's already talked with, with a lot of the companies, but the, the Helene power restoration was textbook. I mean, that was very quick. I mean, have 2.4 million restored, and I think you got to, like, basically to where 20,000 were out within, like, a few days of this. And some of those harder-hit areas have to be rebuilt, and so they're, doing, they're even doing that a lot faster than, than normal. Uh, so that's great, but now we're looking at potentially more outages. You're looking at uh, very, I mean, from, you look at the central part of the state, I mean, there are a lot of people there, and this storm can potentially do a lot of damage. So uh, anything from preparation, we're just, we're just plowing through. But I do think the challenge is just, um, you know, this is a taxing thing to have to go through. And I remember back in 04, it was just like one thing after another, and it was just, and, and people got really fatigued by it. Now, there were people that were out without a power for a long time there. Uh, Helene, fortunately, you know, the power was restored very quickly. I think, I don't think it's ever been restored that quickly after a Category 4 plus storm. Uh, but I think we're looking at this and saying, okay, more, more debris perhaps, more storm surge perhaps. Um, certainly more storm surge in areas that just got the surge but were far off from the eye of the storm on the Florida Peninsula. Uh, and then, you know, what type of damage are we going to see w with infrastructure? I mean, we did have the uh, SR-786, Bradenton Beach, Anna Maria, 
uh, Longboat Key, you know, that road got, got damaged. There was a lot of sand, so we did an emergency repair on that, and we're happy to do that, obviously. We want to get that up and running. But we didn't have as much really major structural damage on our roadways or our bridges as we could have. You know, this could potentially uh, bring more. So, you know, it's a serious matter. But I think people are taking it seriously. I think when you go through and see that you could have storm surge like we saw in Horseshoe Beach and some of those, all the way down uh, hundreds of miles south, you still had significant storm surge. Uh, people, people realize they don't want to mess with that. Does there need to be a supplemental aid package from Congress? What's that? Does there need to be a supplemental aid package for FEMA from Congress before the election? Uh, that would be a question for the congressman. Like, you know, what I said the other day was, we submitted requests to basically just utilize the existing federal programs that, that Americans, you know, have a right to access, and we got approval for what we asked for. Um, how they finance that, I think, is, uh, is up to them. I know there's a lot of controversy about how the agencies use money, but for our perspective, I mean, we will obviously be submitting a pre-landfall request. Uh, if the storm is anything like it's being forecast, uh, of course, we'll, we'll likely get approved for things um, on the back end. Has the Safeguard and National Guard been recalled from the ports? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the, um, the, the that that obviously was um, a mission that was important, and it was a mission we would have discharged. But once they said that they weren't going to do any more work stoppages, we didn't need to have the the state guard there. But we will be ready with a plan in January uh, if there's an interruption, because for before we're even dealing with Milton, Helene, you're not going to have the all the repairs done just in a few months. I mean, it is, these things take time, and there's going to be a need for supplies. There's going to be a need for things. Now you throw another uh, major storm on, and look, we'll hope for the best, but you know, we got to be prepared for major impacts. There is no way that you can just have ships sitting off the coast uh, of, of Florida or South Carolina or Georgia or any of these places with things that people desperately need and just have it idle there. So yes, if we need to, we will do what we need to do to ensure that. And we were, uh, there, there was, I know, at least one ship that was w potentially going to come to one of our ports uh, to, to try to make sure that we kept things going. And I think you likely would have seen other states follow our lead, and you would have seen that. But fortunately, uh, that stopped, uh, and so the ports are open, and so we don't have a need uh, to have those uh, folks there now. Do you, do you know, and this might be a direct cut question, uh, about debris removal crews, the state amasses a bunch of contracts before storm season. We usually have the most because Florida knows how to deal with them. But we have, we've had other disaster, or disasters in other states that those crews could go elsewhere. Are we facing challenges in that area or? <clears throat> Sir, the, there have been some challenges, and you, uh, I don't know that you were at the uh, Anna Maria Island conference that we did. I did advise debris haulers, if they don't show up in Florida and fulfill the contracts that we have in place, that uh, I will direct the Secretary of the Department of Management Services to place them on the suspended vendor list from doing business with the state of Florida. We have these contingency contracts. I think that's one of the things that you can see we do very well, as you mentioned in your question. Um, but we do have vendors that will, especially subcontractors, that will chase the money, and they may leave. However, under the governor's leadership last night at 9 o'clock, um, we, when we uh, decided that we were going to come in and, and truly supplement, we went to some of our same debris vendors and said, hey, we're looking for any dump truck that we possibly can do. And in two hours, our vendors came up with 150 dump trucks and had them on site this morning at Tropicana Field at 7 a.m. ready to go to work. So we're not having any issues finding people to do the work. Uh, we're very appreciative of our private sector partners for showing up and putting in the time and effort here in Florida. So we're good. About how much debris is, needs to be cleaned up here, and how much can be done by Wednesday? I mean, look, the, the storm produced a lot of debris. Now, they've been working on this since the storm hit. Kevin, that was one of the main things Kevin was telling the local communities, have your debris contracts in place. And, and get after it. Not necessarily, I mean, obviously we knew we were still in hurricane season, but it just helps with the recovery. I mean, when people see the debris hauled away, it, it helps the communities bounce back. Uh, when the debris sits there for a long time, and there's sometimes where 
Uh, you have the local governments, they're, they're, they don't want to pay for it, even though they'll get reimbursed and this and that. So, so Kevin really worked with them to do that. So, so there has been progress made, and I think, I think they all took it seriously. But if you look in some of these areas, I mean, we were just in Anna Maria Island, and um, you, know, you go down the road, and there's a lot of debris piled up. Now, you talk about having hundreds of additional pickup trucks, dump trucks, all this, that's going to make a big, big difference. And they're working around the clock. So, I, and I know that if you look at the, the priorities on this are clearly the Pinellas Barrier Islands, the Manatee Barrier Islands, uh, probably coastal Pasco, I think, where we were at um, uh, the other day, probably some sites in Hillsboro, kind of along there. So, with the resources that we're marshalling, that is going to make a difference. And I, I know that everyone, I think, is on the same page at the local level, and certainly we are on the state level, that we have all these other things we got to prepare for. We're, we're sending the word out to the residents that that this is something you got to be preparing for now and take the steps you need to. Uh, and we got to do all that like we would for any other hurricane. But we do have to do this debris mission. So so our supplement I think is more than has ever been done by far. But it's important. And these sites are open 24 hours. And as you asked, if they're not open, we're going to open them. And we're going to do that. And basically, Kevin will, will effectively commandeer that under the emergency authority just to be able to make sure we have a place to put this stuff. So I, I think it's really, really an important mission. I'm glad that, that, that Kevin has, has, um, has spearheaded it. But I don't think we've ever had. I mean, you know, we've got DOT, FWC. I mean, we have all these agencies that have different assets, and they're doing things in the normal course with those assets. It's not like they're just sitting around. So we're pulling them off other tasks to be able to focus on this until this storm uh, makes landfall. And look, you know, we don't know the exact track because I think there's just a lot of uncertainty. That's why the cone ultimately covers the whole western uh, part of Florida, uh, the peninsula. Um, but, you know, if it hits in the same spot if it hits in one of the spots that already had a lot of debris and, and the nasty side of the storm does that, I mean, you know, you're going to see surge. You're going to potentially see much more significant winds. I mean, you know, we didn't have as much wind damage on the Florida Peninsula uh, as you would expect from a Category 4 storm because the eye of the storm was so far off the coast. It was just a really big storm. But you didn't have 140-mile-an-hour winds impacting Pinellas or, or Hillsborough counties. You know, this one, if it's a major hurricane and that eye goes across, you're talking about much more significant wind damage than what we saw in addition to more significant storm surge. So having that debris out there will absolutely be a hazard uh, when, when you're talking about this. So uh, I would just, all the local folks, I know you've been working really hard. We appreciate it. But just do not take your, your, uh, the, the foot off the gas on this debris mission. You have unprecedented amount of support to help you. Uh, let's let's clear. I, hopefully, we can clear it all. I mean, I, I guess it just depends on you know where it's easy. If it's on a major road, like a kind of a third, like you can go get it. Some of the stuff in the private communities can be a little trickier. But bottom line is, there's assets available. More questions. Uh, so the 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 storm surge from from Helene was like 20 feet when it hit the Big Bend, and they're saying we might see the same type of flooding if it hits Tampa Bay. So does that mean that Tampa Bay could see up to 20 feet of storm surge? Yeah, I mean, so now they're saying 10, but here's what I would just say on that. From the entire time I've been governor, you look at different scenarios, and, and probably the scenario that was one that uh, is challenging in terms of the damage would be a, a major hurricane going into Tampa Bay just because it's so vulnerable. The, the Big Bend, yes, we had certain communities that were hit very hard, and we, Kevin and I have been there, and we're helping those out. But if you look at most of the Big Bend is uninhabited. Uh, when you're talking about Tampa Bay and you talk about what even 10 feet of storm surge would do in an area that has, I mean, the greater Tampa Bay area is millions of people. Uh, that is just a, a level of damage, I think, that would far exceed the damage that was done uh, in the Big Bend. It doesn't mean the surge will be that high. That's not what's predicted yet. But I think the surge is predicted to be worse than it was for Helene. Now, I've also pointed out because I, you know, I think you got to be honest with people. I know there's some that want to just say it's, it's definitely going to be as bad as possible, whatever. I mean, I give the range of possibilities because there's a lot of uncertainty here. And I mentioned it earlier, but it is true. Tampa Bay, if it's on the dirty side of the storm, 
uh, will have more storm surge than if it's on the softer side of the storm. In other words, the further south of Tampa Bay the storm goes, it's likely to push, take water out of Tampa Bay. If it's hitting Tampa Bay or even nor a little bit north, it's going to be there's going to be water cascading into Tampa Bay, and that's going to create, uh, I think, the, the more extreme surge uh, elements. But, but there's not projected for 20, but there is going to be projected for potential major, major impacts. And that's why I think people on the barrier islands, uh, people on, in coastal Pinellas, on the main peninsula, people uh, in areas in Hillsborough, and not just on the bay. I mean, you have places in Hillsborough where there'd be major riverine flooding. So there's a lot of, of areas. That's why I want people to know your zone. Anticipate there being from your counties that there will be evacuation orders issued. Uh, certainly, I think probably you'll, you may see some today, but I think you'll definitely start seeing them probably first thing uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but you don't need to have an order to do what you think you need to do to protect yourself. And so you have time today, you have time tomorrow, hopefully you have all day Tuesday, but certainly you have today and Monday to be able to prepare and to be able to take uh, whatever actions uh, that, that, that you deem appropriate. So we'll continue to provide updates. We're monitoring this. I mean, you know, these models, what I would say on Helene was, Helene was, ex Helene's severity exceeded what most models had. Uh, most models were not predicting a major. Most models were predicting a uh, Category 2 storm, some Category 3, um, and so kind of a weaker major, but, but very few were predicting a Category 4. And so Helene always went on kind of the upper range and even exceeded that. I'm not saying that's going to happen on this one, but as we look at these models, you know, there are some models um, that were not accurate for Helene that say it's not even going to become a hurricane. Like, I, I just don't think we can, we're not hanging our hat on that, uh, we're, we're, especially if you don't have a good track record on this. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of range of possibilities, but I think most, if you look at all the data out there, major hurricane is probably the most likely outcome, uh, even though it's not, not 100%. So, so people do have time to, to make the, the, the um, uh, preparations, execute your plan. We'll be back with, with more updates. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is a big effort. This is not a good track for the state of Florida. We've, um, uh, you know, when you have them come in the Atlantic on the East Coast, a lot of times they can skirt. Even when they come underneath Florida and go up, uh, there's always a possibility that maybe it goes a little, little wide, uh, wide to, the, to the left. Uh, here, this thing's just coming across the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, our state is just sticking out. It's, I mean, we're going to get hit in some way, shape, or form, so, so people can just prepare for that. So we're looking at some time on Wednesday for that, and we'll continue to update uh, as we get more data in and the forecast uh, changes if it does change. Thanks.